Hi, I'm Emily. Before I dive into my story, please take a moment to like and subscribe for more tales like this one. Today I want to share a personal story that really turned my life around. I've always valued organization, whether in my work or at home. My career as an auditor suits me perfectly, because it involves scrutinizing details and ensuring everything is just so. My friends often joke that I could find a needle in a haystack, not because I have sharp eyes, but because I'd probably have arranged the hay neatly first. Living with precision isn't just part of my job, it's how I manage to keep everything together. My husband Jake and I have always bonded over our mutual love for the little things. Our house, tidy and organized, was our sanctuary. Or at least, it was supposed to be. I met Jake at a party five years ago. It wasn't the kind of wild party where everyone loses their senses. Rather, it was a gathering for hiking enthusiasts. We connected over our shared love for the trails and classic rock music. Led Zeppelin's Stairway to Heaven was playing when I first saw him, and somehow, that song just seemed to set the tone for our early romance. We married a year later, and it felt like a match made in heaven. We bought a house together, envisioning a future filled with love, laughter, and lots of hiking. But life has a way of testing you. My struggle with infertility has been a silent storm raging within me. Despite my attempts to maintain normalcy, it's a topic that lingers quietly in every corner of our home often unspoken, yet profoundly felt. Sarah, Jake's sister, often drops by unannounced with her three kids. While I love family, her visits are like tornadoes hitting my well-organized life. Toys strewn about, crumbs on the couch, and the relentless noise disrupt the peace I cherish. What's harder is Sarah's attitude. She knows about my infertility issues, but never misses a chance to make thoughtless comments. Jake, can we talk about how often Sarah visits? It's really starting to affect my stress levels. I tried to approach the subject gently one evening, hoping for some understanding or even just acknowledgement. Sarah and her three kids stormed through our living room yet again. Sarah, Jake's sister, never really understood my need for order. Her visits were frequent, chaotic, and stressful. Despite this, Jake seemed oblivious to the tornado they brought into our lives. Oh, come on, Emily. They're just kids, and Sarah needs the support. You know how tough she has it. Besides, they love hanging out here. We have the space, and it's good for them. Jake brushed off. But it's every day, Jake. And every time they leave, I'm the one who ends up having to clean everything up. It's exhausting. I pressed on, hoping to make him see my point of view. Look, I know it's a bit messy, but they're family. We've got to be there for them. Why don't you just relax a bit about the mess? It's not the end of the world. Jake countered without looking up from his task, his tone dismissive. The conversation ended as it always did, with me feeling unheard and frustrated, and with every visit from Sarah and her kids, my resentment grew, not just towards the situation, but towards Jake's indifference to how deeply it affected me. The turning point came on a day that started like any other. I was in our kitchen, lining up ingredients for a recipe I'd found, trying to focus. Jake walked in, his expression unusually serious. What is it? I asked. Sarah's been having a really tough time lately, more than usual. Her landlord's selling the house, and she's got to move out. I told her she and the kids could move in with us. Temporarily, of course, until she figures things out. Jake explained, as if he'd just decided on a new paint color for the living room rather than changing our lives. And I gave her your car. She needs it more than we do. It's tough getting the kids around without one, he added, almost as an afterthought. That moment... Hearing those words, something inside me just broke. The life we had built, the order, and the calm I had worked so hard to maintain, it all felt like it was being taken from me without my consent. And the worst part? Jake didn't even see it as a big deal. The room spun a little as I tried to process his words. My car? Our home? This was too much. You decided this without talking to me. Jake, this is our home and that's my car. Emily, come on, it's not a big deal. This will really help them out. You're overreacting. It's not like it's forever. And it's just a car. We can share the other one. You're being too rigid about everything. Overreacting? Jake, this is not just about a car or space. It's about respect, about partnership. I shot back, feeling the sharp sting of tears. This was not just about the physical things, but about feeling sidelined in my own life. Emily, calm down. You're blowing this out of proportion. Jake attempted to soothe the situation, his voice softer now. Calm down. 
No, Jake, I won't calm down. This is not just about your sister. This is about us, about how little you regard my feelings and my space. You can't fix her life by breaking ours. He sighed, running his hands through his hair. I thought you'd support me. I thought you'd understand. It's settled, Emily. They're moving in next week. He concluded, standing, signaling the end of the discussion. As Jake left the room, I sat there, the chaos of emotion swirling inside me as the smell of coffee filled the still morning air. This was the moment I realized just how alone I felt in my own home. How could I stay in a place where my feelings were treated as inconveniences? The decision that lay ahead was clear, even if painfully so. Later that evening, after spending hours turning over Jake's words in my mind, I decided to approach him again, this time armed with a calm demeanor, hoping to negotiate some middle ground. We sat in the living room, the tension palpable. Can we find another way to help Sarah that doesn't involve upending our lives completely? Maybe help her with a deposit for a new place or something temporary until she gets back on her feet? The conversation spiraled, with Jake reiterating his points and me feeling more alienated with each exchange. His unwavering stance on the matter, his inability to see beyond Sarah's needs, left me feeling like an outsider in what was supposed to be our shared home. As the reality of the situation settled in, a deep sense of betrayal took root. With a heavy heart, I made a decision that night, one that was both painful and necessary. It was clear that my values and needs were no longer aligning with Jake's, and if I were to preserve my dignity and find peace, it would not be within these walls or in this marriage. Jake, I can't stay here and be happy under these conditions. I've tried to make it work, but it's clear you've made your choice, so I need to make mine. Feeling both betrayed and marginalized, I went to our bedroom alone, my mind racing. The next morning, I started packing my belongings. I took only what was necessary, the essentials that could fit in a few suitcases. Jake found me in the midst of packing, his expression a mix of confusion and concern. I pulled down the suitcase, the sound echoing louder than I expected in the empty hallway. Each item I chose to pack felt like a statement, a declaration of independence from the chaos that Jake and Sarah were bringing into my life. You're really doing this, huh? Jake's voice was tinged with disbelief as he leaned against the bedroom doorway, watching me fold my clothes with precision. This isn't the life I signed up for, Jake. I need space to think, away from all this, I gestured broadly, encompassing the disorder that had begun to seep into every corner of our home. I thought you'd cool down, thought you were just upset this morning, Jake murmured, his voice a mix of confusion and regret. Upset doesn't quite cover it. Jake, I felt sidelined in my own home, and now you've made major decisions without even considering me. I need more than an apology. I need respect, and I'm not getting that here. I zipped the suitcase shut, the finality of the sound sharper than my words. I just wanted to help Sarah, Jake defended weakly, but his usual firm stance was missing. Helping Sarah doesn't mean hurting me, but you can't see that, can you? I hoisted the suitcase off the bed, the weight less burdensome than the feeling in my chest. I'm moving out, Jake. I need space and respect, neither of which I can have here right now, I said, my voice steady, my resolve clear. The morning was crisp, a new beginning marked not just by the rising sun, but by the firm decision I had made. The car was quiet, except for the sound of my breathing. The first stop was the lawyer's office. I had called earlier to set up an appointment, my voice steady over the phone as I requested help with filing for divorce. Sitting across from the lawyer, I explained my situation. The process was straightforward but emotionally taxing. As I signed the papers, my signature a firm line under my decision, I felt a mix of sorrow and relief. Sorrow for the love and dreams I was leaving behind, and relief that I was no longer bound to a relationship that had made me feel so undervalued. Next, I found a small apartment in a quiet part of the city. It was nothing like the spacious house I had shared with Jake, but it was mine. I took pleasure in arranging it, choosing each piece of furniture and decor to reflect my tastes and needs. The walls were adorned with pictures of mountains and lakes from our hiking trips, reminders of the life I once loved, but also of the strength those journeys had instilled in me. As days turned into weeks, I began to settle into my new routine. The apartment became more than just a living space. It was a sanctuary, 
I filled my evenings with music, the classic rock that Jake and I had enjoyed together, now a soundtrack to my independence. I also resumed my meticulous habits, but this time for myself, creating order in a place that was solely mine. In this new environment, I discovered an inner resilience that had been overshadowed by my efforts to maintain peace at any cost in my marriage. Now, I thrived on my own terms, finding peace in the solitude and freedom that came from making decisions for myself. Through this journey, I learned an invaluable lesson. Sometimes, the hardest choices bring the greatest peace. Months had passed since I walked away from a life that was slowly suffocating me. My days were now filled with activities that brought me joy and tranquility. Whether it was meticulously organizing my new space, or enjoying the simple pleasure of a quiet evening with a good book. One chilly afternoon, as I was arranging some plants on my balcony, enjoying the crisp air, Jake appeared at my door. The sight of him was a jolt to the calm I had cultivated, his presence a stark reminder of the chaos I had left behind. Emily, I've missed you. I'm here because I need to apologize for everything. I was wrong, he started, his voice laden with regret. The house feels empty without you, and the kids and Sarah are a lot to handle. I didn't realize what I was asking of you until it was too late. I listened, the planter in my hands, feeling the weight of his words, but not the sting they might have held months ago. I appreciate your apology, Jake. Really, I do. But I've moved on. I've found a kind of peace and happiness that I hadn't realized I was missing. Emily, I know I've made mistakes, but can we try again? I want to make things right. I want to go back to how things were between us, Jake pleaded, his eyes searching mine for a sign of hope. I took a deep breath and met his gaze with a calm. What we had, Jake, it's in the past now. I can't go back to that life, to feeling overlooked and undervalued. I found strength in this new life. Returning isn't an option for me. Emily, are you sure? I'm willing to change, to do whatever it takes, he persisted, a note of desperation creeping into his voice. I am sure, Jake. I hope you find a way to manage and that things get better for you. But my place is no longer there with you. I've learned that true peace isn't about making others happy at my expense. As Jake left, the door closing softly behind him, I felt a surge of relief mixed with a bittersweet sadness. The chapter of my life that included Jake was truly closed, but the journey I was on now was one filled with genuine self-respect and inner harmony. As I turned back to my apartment, the morning sun seemed brighter, the air fresher. I was free from the ties that had bound me, free to build my future on my terms. The path ahead was mine alone to shape, and as I laced up my running shoes, I felt a surge of optimism. This was not just another day. It was a declaration of my independence, a celebration of my resilience. With each step on my morning jog, I would affirm my commitment to myself, to the peace and happiness I had fought so hard to achieve. The road ahead was clear, and for the first time in a long time, I was excited to see where it would lead. Now that we've reached the end of Emily's journey, I want to hear from you. How do you balance the need to support family with maintaining your own mental health and boundaries? Have you ever had to make a tough decision like Emily did? Please share your experiences and thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this story, don't forget to like this video and subscribe to the channel for more content like this. Your support helps us keep these stories coming.